G'day there, everyone. Daniel Anderson here. Thanks for joining me today, where we are going to take a deep dive into the new Meeting Notes experience that is powered by Microsoft Loop. And we're going to look at three different aspects, how we prepare for a meeting, how we use Microsoft Loop Meeting Notes inside and during a meeting, and then also some options for us post-meeting as well. So let's dive into preparing for a meeting first. So I'm going to jump into Microsoft Teams and into the calendar here. And let's go about uh, scheduling a new meeting. So we're gonna click uh, and we're gonna start a new meeting here. Now what we'll see is this new section down the bottom here where it says add an agenda others can edit. But we're not gonna click on that right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a title first. Now you'll see why that's important a little bit later in the video. So we are going to say, um, we're going to have a meeting all about uh, SharePoint workspaces. All right. So let's call our meeting SharePoint workspaces. And then we're going to click inside uh, this uh, section down the bottom. Now you'll notice what happens is when I do that, this loop component or the meeting notes is going to take on the name of the actual meeting itself. So that's why it's important to get into the practice of, uh, of having a meeting title before setting or and clicking inside of your meeting notes. Now you see we've got three sections of our meeting notes. We've got agenda, we've got meeting notes, and then we've got follow-up tasks. So while we're preparing for our meeting, let's populate a topic here. So let's go for um, let's go for request process. What's going to be the request process for um, creating SharePoint workspaces? Megan's going to be responsible for that. That'll take us ten minutes. Um, we we'll might want to talk about templates. Uh, Alex can handle that one, um, and that will take fifteen minutes. And then maybe Nesta can talk about uh, life cycle of these workspaces. So let's bring in Nesta into this as well, and that can take 20 minutes, all right? So now we've got our simple agenda. Now what you'll see there is that Alex and Nesta haven't got access to this component yet. So we've got this little option here where we can share and notify them uh, directly now. We're gonna hold off on that just for a second because what happens when we do this, they're going to get a notification to say that in this case, Megan has uh, shared and, and brought them into this meeting notes, but they haven't got a meeting for that yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold off on that just for a minute. And then what we're going to do is add the required attendees up here. So let's add Alex and we'll add Nesta uh, to the meeting and then we will send that across. All right. So these two are now going to get uh, a meeting invite. All right. So I'll bring uh, Nesta's Outlook across, email across here. That's just come through. Here's the meeting invite. Let's just expand this out. You'll notice that down the bottom of this meeting invite inside of Outlook, we've got our meeting notes component right here. So we can then, and you'll notice that that's been, um, he now has access to that, even though we didn't share and notify, it's automatically given him access. The same thing with Alex, all right? So Alex as well has now got a, a, an email to notify him of the, of the meeting. Let's accept it. All right, so now we've accepted it. Where's that gone? It's gone into our calendar, obviously. So let's jump into Nesta's calendar. We've got this meeting here called SharePoint Workspaces. We can open this up. Now, when we expand that, again, that component stays with the meeting invite and we've got that right down here, okay? So again, the power of the loop components is that it doesn't matter uh, where we're accessing it from. It's always live and it is always in sync. All right, now what about when we're in the meeting itself? So the next part of it, let's join the meeting and have a look at the experience inside there. So back over to Megan, let's now join this, um, this meeting right now. I'm just gonna turn off the microphone just so that we don't have any echo. And then I'm also at the same time going to join as Nesta. All right, so let's just do that right now. What we'll see as we join on the right hand side here is that our meeting notes pane is going to appear for us. And again, it's obviously going to be the same as what we've seen uh, as we've been prepared 
sharing, we've now got that experience inside um, inside of the, of the Microsoft Teams meeting itself as well. All right. So you can see here, we've got the agenda, we've got our meeting notes. Uh, now let's also join as Alex. All right. So let's go over to Alex's uh, calendar here and we'll join as Alex and we'll just sh uh, show the experience there when we join. So let's join. And again, what we're going to do is, let's just turn this off so we don't get any echoes. Uh, and then Alex will, will join and we'll get that meeting notes panel on the right hand side as well. So there we go. It's loading up and it's going to be exactly the same as what we see on the right hand side there. So there we go. All right. So that has now, we've now joined the meeting. Now we can take our meeting notes. So we're, take, we're, we're inside the meeting um, and now uh, let's grab some notes. All right, so the request process, um, need, users need to fill out a form. Fill out a form. Uh, templates, we need three templates. And then maybe life cycle uh, is seven days post project and send a notification and we're good to go. So the tasks as well, you'll notice that there's a task section. Now when we're using tasks normally in a workspace or in another component, the tasks are horizontal. Because we're in the context of a Teams meeting inside of this pane here, it's now in a vertical format. So a nice little uh, user experience here, know, knowing where the, the context of where we're working. So the task name here could be uh, complete form. Let's go complete form. Let's assign that to Megan. Due date, we can set a due date here as well. And then let's just add another couple of tasks here. Um, create first template. Let's assign that to Alex. And then give him a due date of then. And then let's add one more task for Nesta uh, to create um, life cycle policy. All right, so we'll create a life cycle policy. We'll assign that to Nesta. So we'll type his name in right here, set a due date, and then we're good to go. All right, so our meeting notes, it's all live in sync. Just to show you, I'll bring Alex's meeting who's joined in as well. And you can see that we've got all of that functionality inside there. Now, you'll see that it's live because I'll jump in as Alex on the left-hand side. And you can see on the right-hand side that I can see where Alex is in the actual meeting notes itself. All right, so that is all well and good. Now the top here, you can see that we've got the ability to toggle our meeting notes on and off. Uh, if we want to focus on the meeting itself, then we can re-enable or re-look at our meeting notes pane on the right here too. So that's it, we've now created and we've, uh, we've finished our meeting. Let's end our meeting now. We've taken everything that we need to, all right? Um, and now what happens to our loop component? Well, that stays with the meeting, right? So if I open up this meeting now, and you can see that I can post meeting, I can now access this loop component as well. All right, so it doesn't shut off, it doesn't close, it doesn't end, it stays and it stays in sync here. Uh, and I can then go back, have a look at the notes and the agenda and the tasks as well. You'll see here that the tasks have, have moved and changed into this horizontal format. You'll also notice that you can, it, it, it collates how many tasks each user has down the bottom of the assigned to row, row as well. So you can see Megan's got one, Alex has got one, and also Nesta has one as well. Now the great thing here, again, I'm in Teams here, but if I was in the context of Outlook, okay? So you can see inside of the context of Outlook, again, I will still have that same experience um, inside of Outlook as well. So the SharePoint workspaces, there's the meeting, it has, it has ended now, but I can go back to that meeting, I can expand, and then I've got our meeting recap here, uh, of our and we've got our loop component, all right? So a really powerful option there to be able to, uh, to go back and have a look at the meeting notes. The other thing that we can do also is that we can copy this out now. So because this is a loop component, we might copy this out and maybe we wanna have a chat, 
All right, so maybe we, we, we want to continue a conversation or maybe we want to bring in a, another group of people. So let's say um, I'm logged in as Megan. Let's start a, just a, a one-to-one -one chat with Alex, right? So not in the context of the meeting itself, but if I want to um, you know, have a chat to Alex one-on-one -on -one, we can, about the meeting, then we can then paste that loop component inside of this one-to-one -one chat. And then now we've got that we don't have to go back to our meeting. We've now got that in our chat, um, in our chat as well. All right, so it's the same, uh, the same component that we can see there, and we can interact with it, and we can do what we need to do, uh, and then it is in the context of a of a group chat there. Now, what about if we've already got a meeting that's already scheduled that didn't have a meeting notes um, set up for it? Well, we can do the same thing, right? So we can go back to a meeting and I've got this intranet launch planning um, meeting here. Now, what we can do is if it hasn't had one already, and you can see down here, this has been sent out already and it doesn't have a meeting notes um, created for it. So we can go back into a pre-scheduled uh, pre meeting and we can go back and retrospectively create a meeting notes loop component. Again, it's gonna take on the name of the meeting and you can see that we've got the same structure. So topic, what are we, are we looking at? Um, let's go create plan. Now what you'll see is I can go at mention Alex. Now this is where you would wanna use this share and notify, okay? What we can do is we can click Alex, we can grant him access now to this component. So if I go to Alex's uh, calendar, what we'll see is when we when Alex now opens up that calendar, that that will now have that loop component or the meeting notes as part of that meeting invite now, okay? so. Even if we've scheduled a, uh, a meeting uh, prior to creating a meeting notes and we've already sent out the invitation, then you can still create a meeting notes component uh, after the fact as well. Now, where are these meeting notes stored? I can already hear you asking. So the meeting notes uh, really become a Microsoft loop component or a loop file. Now, these files are stored in the meeting organizers OneDrive for business. So if I am logged in as Megan here and I pop into Megan's OneDrive, you can see here in a folder called meetings is where all of those meeting notes loop components or loop files, because remembering a loop component is another form of, a, of an office document or an office file. And you can see here, these are dot loop uh, file extensions. They're all stored inside of this folder called meetings inside of your OneDrive. You'll also get the activity on the right hand side here. See who you've mentioned and who accessed and when you shared it and all that sort of stuff inside of your OneDrive as well. Now, another user experience is that you can open these up inside of the browser. And again, you've still got that same information, the same component, you can interact with it just through the web browser as well. So there we have it, the new meeting notes experience powered by Microsoft Loop. I hope that brings you some value today. Uh, we took a look at how we can use it when we're preparing for our meeting, either a new meeting or a meeting that has already been scheduled and how we can utilize it during a meeting and then also some possibilities post meeting about how we can then still use that component from the meeting. So I hope that brings you some value. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.